Hello guys, finally I got to try Alteryx's new intelligence tool, so it has two categories, it has machine learning and text mining. So this video I'm going to look at machine learning, primarily the assistive modeling tool, and then they also have text mining which I'm going to look at in another video. So we are going to try to make a predictive model to predict wine quality because we're a nice fancy schmancy um, wine making well, what they call them? Winery, sorry. We're a nice fancy winery and we want to know what the expected quality of our wines are based on these factors before we send them out for the prestigious wine tasters to score them. So this can be done automatically with the assistive modeling tool. But before we get to that, let's just uh, look at our data. Let's see what our data looks like. So let's use the field summary tool. Um, actually, one of the important steps will be to make sure you have the right data types. We can see that these are all strings and they look like strings, not really. The only one that's really a string is the quality because um, we're going to treat this as categorical. But the other ones really should be integer or double. But the, um, the assisted modeling tool does that automatically, so I'm not going to change that. But I just want us to look at the quality. We could look at all these ones, but they're really in the wrong data type, so it's not really going to be helpful to even look at them. So I'm just going to look at this one. Because we want to see how our wines are distributed quality-wise. This is important, and we'll see why at the end. So... Um, let's let's build the interactive chart. It's, it's nicer to look at that one. Okay, so here's the distribution. Notice anything? We have a massive issue with class imbalance here. So just based off of this, we don't really expect the phenomenal model. Um, we could do some oversampling, but honestly, uh, <laughs> I love Alteryx. I love the pieces, but I'm not really. I don't think it has good oversampling tools, to be honest. So I'm not really going to address oversampling here. It does have the oversampling node, which honestly undersamples more than anything. And ideally, I would like these three at least to be oversampled. But we're going to skip that for now, but I'm just showing you that because based on this, we don't really expect a perfect model. But let's get into building the model. So machine learning. Oh, before we do that, sorry, I lied. Um, let's just move this down here. Before we do that, we need to partition. We're going to make a training and testing set. So we need to make training and testing set. So let's create samples. We we'll, let's do 80 20 or 70. Let's do 70 30. I'm going to do 70 30 split. Okay, let's run that. Okay, so we have our split. Now we are going to use the this node, the evaluation, to build our model, and we'll use the validation to score it later on to see how how far off it's been for certain things. So the this is the um, assisted modeling tool right here. Just drag it on, and it literally does everything for you. <laughs> you don't believe me? Let's see. So we're going to run this so that I can read the data and then we can start reading the model. It's literally amazing how this does everything. Like, literally does everything for you. So it's thinking. The first screen is really cool because it actually teaches you a little bit about, you know, what you need to do for each step, what you need to look out for. So you can read this and learn something. Uh, let's just start reading the model. The first thing we need to do is honestly like one of the only things we need to do actually is to select the uh, target and select the type the method so i'm really going to do class classification because quality is really categorical it's not continuous it's not really a number it's more of a category so we're going to go with classification models yes we can't change this once we do this and we have two options we can let it do like just do everything and not see anything or we can do step by step i want to do step by step because i want to see what it's doing you know so because i can show you guys because that's way more fun 
this honestly is like one of my favorite things because it automatically detects the data type so we don't have to like go in and use the uh, select node to change that and it's you can just like look at it it looks good it's accurate next and it even cleans it up for you so that you don't have to you know deal with missing values but again this data set is <laughs> perfect i'll probably like look at one that has missing values to see what it does with those missing values but anyways we don't have any missing it's checks for that we can just go next and this is really wonderful because it actually evaluates every single variable to see if it is a good predictor and they're all good so we can just go to next now it gives you options it goes oh we can build these three wonderful models for you what do you want ideally you always want to build more, than, build more than one so that you can compare so we're just going to have it do all three of them and it's going to do them and it builds these models like really really quickly like i was very impressed at how quickly it builds them all right now it tells you which model is the best uh, or which model has the highest accuracy in that case that's the random forest model so we can actually look at all the all the matrices for all the models so let's random forest we can look at the confusion matrix So, you know, we can see that for a quality of 8, like, it doesn't even predict any of that accurately. It either predicts them as a 6 or a 7, and that's kind of expected, honestly, because we only had, what, 10? We only had 10 cases, well, in the whole data set. So, in, in the um, training data set, maybe we had 7 or less cases, which are quality 8. So, I mean, it's struggling <laughs> because, again, we don't really have that much data. Where we have the most data, it's performing a bit better. I just love this visual codes because honestly confusion matrices i mean well this one is pretty easy because it's labeled appropriately but, like sometimes confusion matrices are not labeled appropriately and they can be quite confusing to read but between the perfect labels and the color coding it's just like so easy to read this so this was predicted as six or seven not right in either cases a quality of six was predicted as six 71 percent of the time which is pretty good um wow looks like literally for every other case it does not well, seven, it gets 30% of them right, but everything else, it struggles. But again, we have massive class imbalance, so that's to be expected. So this model is what we're going to go with. Uh, you can look into the other ones as well, see how it's doing. Really, oversampling um, could help this be better, but we're not really getting too much into that. I just want to show you guys how this, this nice, cool new tools, how they work, what they do. So we are going to go ahead and complete the, the workflow building the random forest model. So we're going to add this model and continue to workflow. We can do more than one, by the way. Actually, let's just do two. So we're going to build two. Decision tree is 55% accurate. Um, That's not really... Yeah, just going to not do that one. So it's built those two models completely in 2.9 seconds that's pretty good so now we have the um what do you call this the crystal ball to predict uh, to predict our test data so let's connect those so we have our validation data here i'm using the word test and validation interchangeably but honestly they don't mean the same thing but anyways, let's just let's just test it. So now it's going to look at data it's never seen before and try to predict the quality. We're gonna add a browse tool here. Honestly, we really don't need to because it does show the results down here but people add browse tools i really don't know why so i'm just gonna add that but what i think it's more interesting to look out for is going to be the difference so the difference between the actual quality and the predicted quality so i'm going to do those calculations but let's just run this first it's done for both of them this is the random forest and this is the xg boost i really like how this is organized and you know labeled appropriately if you only want to work on one you could just like switch this off so that it doesn't run and save you some processing power oh great now i have to run it again because 
Do I have to? I think I do. <coughs> Okay, so it's done. So let's just go and look into the random forest. What you're going to see here is you're going to see this new column, which is the quality predicted, and this is the actual quality. So you have that, and you have the same thing here. Okay, before we call it a day, I think it'll be helpful to look at the differences. So let's see the difference between the predicted quality and the quality, and then summarize that into a table to see what the difference is for each quality. So that's going to make more sense when I make that table. So before we do calculations, we need to make sure our variables are in the right form to be a calculation. And our quality is a string because we never bother to change it. By we, I mean me. <laughs> because the um, assisted modeling tool did that for us within the confines of the model, but now we do have to change it. So we're going to make it an int, and also the predicted quality needs to be an int. If we don't do this, we can't do any mathematical uh, computations using these variables. So I want to make a new column, I'm going to call it difference, uh, predicted, minus, actual. Is it going to let me have a minus sign in there? Let's look. Oh, looks like it's going to let me. Great. So predicted quality minus the quality, that's what we need to calculate. And this has to be an integer, integer. Okay, so we've run that. So let's look at that new variable. So here we can see that there is no difference in the first row. So that's because the predicted the predicted quality and the actual quality are the exact same thing. Well, in this case, the quality, the actual quality is a five, and the predicted is a sorry, the actual quality is, is a six, and the predicted quality is a five. So it's negative one. So it's one less than it actually is. In this case, it's one more than it actually is. Actual is a five and the predicted is a six, so it's positive one, so it's higher. So let's summarize this into a table. So let's drag on a summarize node to the canvas. I need to group by quality. That's our primary grouping field. And then we want to count the difference. And then we want the difference to show. So we want to see like what uh, each difference, I guess. We want to see what each difference number is. So we want that to show, so we're going to do a group by. Okay, so we're going to run this. Okay, so we have our table. This table tells us the quality and it tells us the difference as well as the count so for quality of three we'll, three we only had three records actually that's why we only have one difference uh, i guess category and for all those three records it was predicted as two higher for each of those cases so in all those cases it was predicted as a five for quality of four 13 times it was predicted as a five and eight times it was predicted as a six so two higher for a quality of 571 times, it was predicted accurately as a 5 was on the money. 54 times, it was 1 above. And oh, okay, that's all. And then for quality of 6, 59 times, it was predicted as a 5, so 1 below. 110, it was on the money. 3 times, it was predicted as a 7, so it was 1 time higher. And you get the gist. So that's, you know, that's how we look at that. Which I just wanted to do that to show you. How we can evaluate each of those scores to see how far off it is let's go back into the model because there are a few things i did not talk about so by the way it does save it so you can go back in and look at things so two more tabs i didn't get to so this is very important because this is the future importance chart and it shows you the features that were most important for predicting that quality alcohol no surprise it's on here that's great uh, sulfate is important and of course they're ranked as well and in the configuration window, you can go back and see how it configured the data types, what it did with missing values. So if there are missing values, it will perform an action and it will tell us what it did. For the features, it tells us whether or not a feature was used. It used all of them in this case. If it wasn't, it will indicate that. If it didn't for any feature, it, it, it will indicate that here. And it tells us which algorithms and the accuracy of those as well. 
So it's pretty good. Again, the confusion matrix is very, very important. You know, it tells you where it has biases and where it really doesn't classify things for all the models. And I really love, love, love this because it's so clear and so nice to read. They really, really did uh, think this out when they, did, when they designed this graphic. Okay, now the icing on the cake. So you can actually export the code for the model to Python. Like, how crazy is that? <laughs> okay, so you can see there is now a new icon. There's a new note and it's a Python code. Me personally, I don't, um, I don't see coding as the best way to build models. I like to use applications like this. So I'll either use Altrix or Nine. But if I must code, that's when I code. So if there's something I can't do with Altrix or with Nine, then I code. But for people who like code, maybe you have people in your organization who use programs versus some who use code. You can actually do both with this tool because you can export the code and it's written for you like how crazy is this you see it has our target variables it exports i mean of course code is what builds it so it shouldn't be too surprising that it has the code but it's very nice that they are actually sharing the code with you so this i, I love this feature here so you can save this code you have this code and that's just fantastic Overall, I love this tool. I think it's great for people who have some knowledge, maybe not expert knowledge, because it really does help you along the way. It makes making models very, very fast and very efficient, does lots of things for you. So really, really like it. Uh, one improvement, though, is they should have something to deal with class imbalance. That's something I would like to see in future releases. If they can get to that, that would be great. Overall, I love it. And I hope I've piqued your interest because I think this is really really cool if you have any questions feel free to let me know and I'll be happy to geek about this all the time so yeah uh the next video I'm going to get to the text mining section so be on the lookout for that thank you for watching goodbye